and welcome to The Playlist. We are your host, Holly Thompson. And I am Jack Brown. This is your personal guide to all of the UK's latest tunes and music news. So without wasting any more time, let's take a look at what's happening on today's show. First up, we take a look at the recent uprising of vinyl records against digital music. And we also have a guest in to talk to us about the great vinyl record. Then we take a look at how to get started in the busking industry, covering everything from licensing to popular locations. Following on from that, we see how we got on in the first ever Jack vs Holly. And to wrap up the show, we have a live performance. Now in the last year, global music revenues have increased by 3%, all thanks to the matter of digital sales overtaking physical copies for the first time ever. Therefore, it should be very surprising to hear that vinyl records have been making quite a comeback in the last few years. Yes, very surprising indeed, especially considering there are certainly a few people who don't even know what vinyl records are. So to see what the public's opinion is on this matter, we sent out a crack team onto the streets of Camden in London to inquire further. According to recent statistics, there has been a 53% increase on sales of vinyl than was previously last year. The most popular vinyl of 2016 being David Bowie's album, Black Star, beating by more than double the number of 2015's biggest seller, Adele's 25. But let's see firsthand what some of the public's opinions are. Our first question, have you ever listened to vinyl? Uh, I have, yes. Not for a long time, but I, I have, yes, in the past, yeah. I did, back in the day. Yeah, I have. You've got vinyl now, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, a little bit when I was younger. Like, my parents had them. Do you listen to music online? Yes. <laughs> yes, with Spotify. Yes. SoundCloud or Spotify. Yeah. Uh, YouTube. Not, um, I, don't, I haven't got Spotify or anything like that. I think I'll just stick to YouTube because it's just free, isn't it? I can just get it whenever I want, just type in the song I want and then it's there. I, I only use Apple Music myself and that's, that's more than enough for me. Yeah. Is there a need for so many online services? I mean, one will do, won't it? But I think that it's got to be competition. No, I think the one... That's a difficult question. Like, I don't think there's a need for it, but I can understand why there is because of the global popularity, then increased pop like competition. So I can understand why there are so many, but to be honest, one could probably do. Yeah, I agree. I think too, because like it's good that there is a bunch because it sort of drives down the prices for them. But at the same time, yeah, I think they do very similar functions. Would you pay a higher price for better quality music? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. If the artist's got more money as well, though, yeah. That's even more. Yeah. Now, here's the big question. Do you prefer digital or vinyl, and why? Digital is easier. It's more convenient to get it, to stream it uh, online. Yeah, it's, it's really easy on the bus and back home and wherever you are, you can bring your music with you, so that's quite, quite OK. I think digital, just because it's easier, it's sort of like I can have it on my phone, I can have it on my laptop, listen to it on the tube whenever. It's cheaper, <laughs> convenient. And, yeah. So. I think I prefer listening to vinyl, but it's more effort. It's not as easy, so I probably yeah. listen to digital more. Yes, yeah, similarly, I think it's just easier digital. Seems like this rivalry between digital music and vinyl records is getting rather heated. Let's head back to the studio to carry on with this debate. Joining us now, we have a vinyl enthusiast who's also studying music at Goldsmiths University, Elliot Thomas. Welcome to the show, Elliot. Hi guys, thanks for having me. So when did you first start playing vinyl records? Must have been about 15 years ago with my, uh, my parents and my grandparents were really into the whole vinyl hmm. scene. So yeah, I just grew up on them really. Hmm. So do you associate um, your love for vinyls with family love as well? Yeah, definitely. It was like family time something is probably a bit gone on some people now but uh yeah it was just always sit down just listen 
to vinyls and just a good time. And Elliot, when did you start collecting vinyl records? It must be about two years ago. Uh, loads of different avenues to get vinyls now. Um, like something online, just get sent a couple. Mm. It's a lot cheaper than what it used to be, I right. have to say. Okay, and you are a bit of a music man yourself, as we yeah. said in the intro. So when you have your own illustrious music career, which <laughs> route are you going to go down? Vinyl, digital, both? Probably both. I mean, there's no reason not to now. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, that's why last year it was such a massive thing was because people were releasing vinyls and you got the digital download with it. So there's no reason not to do both, in my opinion. So, yeah. But collecting vinyls can be expensive. Why yeah. is that? I mean, it's loads of different things. I mean, it's like the manufacturing. Um, a lot of them are really vintage now. Mm -hmm. But like the new ones getting produced, they're not that much i mean it's expensive compared to like itunes but uh <laughs> <laughs> on the grand scheme of thing it's not as bad if you're really into listening to music and it's still nice to have something physical yeah well, right? yeah def definitely yeah. Yeah. yeah now we've got a perfectly placed here a vinyl record player it's almost like we planned it elliot yeah. so would you be able to show us how something like this works yeah two definitely lights? so i've got a uh, a bit of Jimi Hendrix, obviously, a nice little classic. Nice. Um, is this from your own personal collection? Yeah, it's just it amazing, okay. amazing tracks. So what type of music do you listen to? I mean, I, li I mostly listen to jazz. Mm. How simple and seamless was that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mostly Very listen to jazz, easy. but then Jimi Hendrix, that kind of stuff, it's just amazing. Yeah. And this looks like quite a modern version yeah. of the record player. So is this, is this kind of a top spec one or? I mean, you don't, the things you don't really need, it's, you don't really need to spend like hundreds and hundreds of pounds on getting something to play these records. I mean, probably about like a hundred pounds. Really? And it's not, if you're gonna invest in the records, the vinyls, it's definitely worth it uh, for the quality of it. Well, it's quite modern. As you can see, there are speakers attached to the vinyl. Um, so what would you possibly go for? Would you go for an old fashioned style vinyl player or maybe perhaps a modern one? I mean, it's, the modern ones are a lot cheaper because I mean the old ones are massive like gramophones that sit. It's not necessary, but like, the new ones are so much cheaper and they do the, they do the same thing. So. Yes. We're with us all afternoon, Elliot. For the moment, thank you very much. Uh, now I'm sure we've all had that dream of creating our own music one day, performing to a big audience in a once in a lifetime experience. Now, one way to start that off is to bus. Buskers are scattered around almost everywhere on the streets of London. They create an inviting atmosphere and add a drop of musical colour to our daily commutes. So if you're interested, here's a quick sketch on how you can get on the right track. Hey, you! Yeah, you! Are you a music artist looking to play music to the public and make money as well? Then you should become a busker. There are five simple steps to becoming a busker. Step one, choose your instrument wisely. Make sure you have a real connection with this instrument. Um, no, 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 not that type of connection. Step two, choose your image suited to the type of music you play. Please don't dress like a tramp or it won't end well. Step three, do your research. Make sure you cover everything, such as where you are planning to play and the restrictions in the area you want to play in. Different areas will have different restrictions. Step four, apply for your permit. You can apply through your local government website and please make sure you put in your right details. If you're planning on busking on the London Underground, you will need to audition your act before you can get a permit. Step five, go and collect your permit. Step six, have fun. Hold on, hold on, don't leave yet. You need to know the do's and don'ts. It might just save your life. Be nice and respectful to the public you are performing to. Don't wind them up or invade their personal space. Keep in your own turf preferably at least 50 metres away from other street performers, or else you better learn how to fight them. Play your music in respectful areas, not in front of places such as churches, hospitals or police stations. Pick your audience wisely. You don't want to end up like this. Now, you are ready to become a busker, my friend. I wish you the best of luck. We hope that information
information was helpful to everyone thinking of busking and we wish you the best of luck. However, if there is any more information that you require, please do visit www.buskinlondon.com and you'll find all the information and more that you could need. Now, Jack, yes. Elliot, prepare yourselves as we're about to play a little game. What I want both of you to do is guess which celebrities bust or not. Okay, you ready? You ready for this? I'm, I'm good to go. All right, let's do All it. All right then, so, Cheryl. As an X Factor judge. Yes, that's the one. Cheryl. Uh, I hope not. No, I can't <laughs> imagine her busking. <laughs> she did not busk. <laughs> Ed Sheeran. He must have done. Definitely. Yeah. He's got that look. Yeah. 100%, yeah. He went from sleeping on the streets and sofa surfing to becoming a Brit Award winner. Um, passenger? Passenger. I think probably went down the same route as Ed, so yes. I'd probably go no. You, no? No, I don't think yeah? so. Yeah? Okay. You sure? All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're not giving anything Let, away. Let's sure. <laughs> No, he did busk. Yes. <laughs> what about Drake? Drake. Um, in Lonely Streets of Canada, I busking. Can't <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. No, he didn't. Rod Stewart? Rod, a little bit older, but maybe yeah. back in the day, yes. Fre frequent the tunnels. Yeah, <laughs> frequent the tunnels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah. With a folk singer named Wiz Jones. Um, they both um, went along the streets of London and Europe. Um, what about Adele? Adele, huge superstar yeah, now. Could, mm. uh, hello on the streets. Hello on the streets. I mean, it would sound great, but yeah. I don't no, think not Adele would have done it. Not in Tottenham. No. She did not busk, no. Um, Tracy Chapman. Tracy Chapman. Um, I'm going to go yes. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to say no. Tracy Chapman busk. Huh? Yes. What about Justin Timberlake? Timbers. I, can't, I, can't I think imagine. he's too. I think he's too boy band. To yeah. Do that. No. I, I'd say no. Unless, unless the whole band is quite involved. No, he yeah. didn't. He was one of the two lead vocalists and the youngest member of the In Sync, though. Um, Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow. Um, I'm not above saying I don't know who that is. So. That don't impress <laughs> me much. much. Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, yeah, she busts. Yeah, she did. Last but not least, BB King. Yeah, must have done. 100%. Yeah, he began on the streets of the Mississippi. Now, this week, without us knowing, we were set on a mysterious task by our producers to do a three second song challenge. Yes, we were. And if you haven't guessed already what we had to do, the aim of the game was very simple to guess the title of the song with only three seconds of that song being played. So, whoever got the most correct wins the game. So, let's see how we got on. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Gonna lose. Right, you ready for this? Yeah, all right then. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> right, here we go, here's our challenge. So, Holly, this is our three second song challenge. It says your challenge today is to guess the song and artist in just three seconds. Oh, there's rules as well. So play three seconds of a song and we have to guess the name and artist. You get a point if you get it correct and then the other one will get like half a point if it's like half. Um, it seems pretty simple, yeah, but are you going to be all right with that? Oh, sure, sure? that'll be fine. Um, so we're going to need uh, a buzzword, I guess it's okay. like our buzzer. What's your, gonna be, what's your buzzword? Uh, balls. I want. How about that? How about <laughs> okay. that? So before you answer, you need to buzz. If not, the other player gets the point. It says the player with the most points will win this week's Jack versus Holly. All right, let's do you it. Ready for this? I'm ready for this. All awesome. right, let's do it. Let's do it. How about that, Beyonce? Um, um, I'm in love. I oh, know. If I were a boy. Yes, I got it. Did I get it? Yes. Correct. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Right, I was a bit of a shaky start, but let's let's go for number two. How about oh. that? Um, I keep forgetting my. She's. Oh out. no, I don't know it. Go on. Balls. Uh. uh okay, it's called She's the One. But Sarah Robbie Phonics. Williams. She's the One. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> I was like stereophonic. Okay. Two. Same same thing, isn't it? I think we're on two each. Same now. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I one. I don't know either. Can we get that again? Yeah. I don't no, know. No, I don't know it. How about that? Craig David. Um, um, select something. Uh, select. Uh, Awful Dodger, isn't it? Awful Dodger, Craig David. Uh, Bow Selector. Can I, can I have a go, I guess? Craig David, rewind. <laughs> Craig David, so half I should get a half a point. We get a half point. That's half good. Okay, okay. How about that? Coolio gets a paradise. 
Oh, I was going to say Britney Spears. Oh my god! Yeah, it was quite a Britney Spears in there, wasn't there? No! Yeah! No! Yeah. No! Oh yeah. Last one now. Here we go. Alright, let's do it. How about that? Um, girls Aloud, um, um, something machine. Oh, I've got it! Balls! Love machine! Yeah! Yes. Yes. Point for point for you. Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't know who's won. Do you think you've won? Yeah, definitely. Well, I think you've won as well, which is really yeah, annoying. Yeah, exactly. But uh, <laughs> we're not going to have long to find out. We're going to find out through the magic of television very quickly. Yeah, so back to the studio so we can hear the results. I'm off. <laughs> that was actually a lot of fun to film, right? It was. And it was so much fun. Did you like how I seamlessly left? Oh my goodness, you need to work on your walking out. <laughs> yeah, that I do. Um, so we genuinely don't know who's won. Uh -huh. um, I've got the results here in front of me. You ready to find out? Ready to find out. Drum roll. I think you might have pipped it. Let's find out. <sighs> What's the result? Okay, it's close. Holly, you got three. Yeah. And I got two. <gasps> How about that? <laughs> How well about done. that? <laughs> yeah, worthy winner. Uh, now, before we go, we have a live performance from Elliot. Yes, Jack. And now to lead us out, Elliot with his cover of Songs for My Father by Horace Silver. <laughs> Thank you. 